It is the Riot Podcast. Happy Monday, July 18th. What's so happy about it? I don't know. <laughs> Well, that was very grumbly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, that's the, that's not me. That's somebody I'm a, that's a dialogue. I'm doing the voice of the listener right now. I, they're that, saying, what's so happy about it? Because they're know, having a tough day. Even the graveling and stuff, it like feels a bit like uh, old man, get off my uh, lawn. Well, sort that's of style. how you feel when you're having a tough Monday. <laughs> well, you can be happy that we're now past like what the halfway point of summer. Why is that a happy thing? What do you mean? We're that much closer to the fall. Oh, yeah. Get over this stuff. What do you mean? I like the summer. You're not ready for fall football, Mm -hmm. bonfires, that beautiful fall weather. I like football. The only thing I... That could improve it is if it was, uh, well, really all year round, but especially in the summertime. No, no, I'm ready for, I would like uh, hoodies and long sleeves. Yeah, long sleeves. Weren't you guys just Even though complaining? You're both wearing long sleeves. Well, yeah, that's because I like wearing them so much. I wear them every day anyway, so I'm ready for the weather to accommodate were... my style. Not five minutes ago, you're like, it's cold in here, and, all of it, and now you want the weather to get colder. Well, I'm not ready for winter. Well, and I want it to be I outside. Fall. I want that to match. And oh my God. Gosh, can you just like leave changing and it. pumpkin stuff and then bring us on to winter? Uh, I can't can't get behind you on that. Yeah, because you're grumpy. Because I love the <laughs> summer. But enjoy the summer. I summertime don't want you, I don't want to hear you saying enough. what's so happy about this Monday is the summertime. Love That's it up, right. Then. Well, hopefully everybody did have a fantastic weekend. We cover a bit from the weekend and uh, we'd love to, you know, hear about what you guys did too. Yeah, we talked about uh, some of the things, some of our talents here on the riot, and what we're really good at. Talents. Yeah, I mean, we're stretching a little bit. Some slight talents that As we a have word to use. that we uh, we're not so we don't, we don't like doing so much. Essentially, I think uh, you can you can be talented. You can uh, anything can be turned into an art form. Oh, look online. Do you feel like uh, the talent that you've been bestowed with is a curse instead of a blessing? Uh, I think. That happens to the to almost every time everybody that has a talent <laughs> at some point uh, it comes around to bite you because what happens when you're good at something eventually it becomes an obligation in yeah, some way. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the, you know the question of like what do you if you had a million if you didn't have to work the rest of your life what would you spend your time doing and then that's what you're supposed to do for your job but then you'd start hating it mm-hmm. and so that's exactly how it works. Anything you love. Uh, if you're for, if it's uh, an obligation, then all of a sudden it's not fun anymore. Well, we talk about a few things that we feel like we're good at, um, but that we end up not liking to have to do. And then our our list is shorter. So we, <laughs> we like to hear from you guys what you're better at. Well, to be clear, we don't like doing a lot of things. True. We're just not good at a lot of things either. Yeah, it's a combination of both of those. We also <laughs> talked about how the Mega Millions jackpot is reaching uh, another big, big number. And so how do you guys feel about possibly winning the jackpot? Feel good about that? Uh, what did you buy us uh, a group ticket? You know, that's something we should start doing. <laughs> Leave me out here. Oh Leave me gosh. out here. Well, first of all, are you old enough? Am I old enough to what? To get a? I thought it was eighteen to play. Is it eighteen? Yeah, it's eighteen to play the lottery. How old? Do You're you think over eighteen, it is? right? I'm 24. I'm 24. Okay. It's not how old we act. It's how old you actually are. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to because that feels like so. Uh, office placey, you know, for like someone like who's going to go. We never have any fun anymore. Yeah, like, well, no, like who's going to be the one to go get the, the lottery ticket? Me. It sounds like I did it's me. And yeah. then whoever wins feels like you have to share, even though that was maybe your ticket. Mm. But then Isaiah's mad because he's the one who went to go and buy it. I did. Like, so you want a bigger cut, the, huh? the station apart. I, at this point, if you want to go get one to split for this jackpot tomorrow night, I'll take it. I'll split <laughs> it with you. I'll split it. Because at the end of the day, you know, think about how much that would change your life oh. forever. Think about how happy we'd be as a well, station. I wouldn't see you guys anymore. What do you mean? Yeah. It's, if if we three split the jackpot, which is over $500 million right and now. And if you took the cash. At least one of us is quitting. I don't care what you say. If you took the cash, oh, that'd be quitting. 350 <laughs> between. Uh, that would be between all of us. And you know what? What did we just talk about? Uh, whatever you love, even if you love it, uh, you hate doing it when it's work. And so if we won the money, as much as I might love uh, doing the show, uh, it's also work, so I hate it. So I could. I would still support 
But I just couldn't do this show with you guys from the locations that I'd be living in now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be living in the house I am now. Mm-mm. I probably would have to move. It wouldn't be that I don't want to do the job anymore. I'm just not able to. No, for it's my just, new, oh, uh, my it's new hard mansion. on the yacht. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we could get a good with uh, that much money. You could get a good connection set up. Well, it'd be like we're in the same. It'd feel like we're in the same room. I probably would devote my life to some charity or something. No. You know, bettering <laughs> the world. And, uh-huh. yeah. You know, a little more, just spreading my touch. You know, across the uh, to get the, the tax breaks and stuff. You know, all the good stuff. Yeah. I like how you'd become this philanthropist that people like respected and stuff. And then you're just like, no, I just won the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worked hard at giving to others. You know, we can give at the amount of money we have now. Uh-huh. We just d- don't do that often. <laughs> <laughs> I tip. I feel like everywhere I go, I tip. All right. I'm you tipping. Am I going to Smoothie oh, King? So what? I'm going calling... to Wendy's. That's, a, that's charity. So you're for calling me. them charity cases. It's not the charity Wendy's case. Workers. But when I go to Krispy Kreme and they're asking me for a tip, for putting the donuts in the box. It feels like I'm giving to a charity, all right? (laughs) Then you're not a giver. You've never put donuts in a box, obviously. (laughs) Yeah, clearly I haven't. Well, make sure you join us by texting and saying hi. Um, I'm sure there's other things in this podcast, too. We would definitely love to hear your opinion at. So if you just text 877 to Radio U and put your podcast listener, and then that comes to us anytime, and we'll see it next time we're in the studio. And I think think we better move along. Let's just go have some food. I think we're hungry. I think we need to, yeah, we need to split up. Now. <laughs> Till tomorrow. See you guys. Don't say we didn't warn you. This is the worst of the riot. I don't know if you saw this video going around uh, the internet over the weekend. It's been around a little longer It has. Than that. You've yeah. seen it before. Listen, every bear. And you bear, neglected to share it with the well, show. Well, every bear video I get uh-huh. uh, many times over, uh-huh. and this one was awfully cute. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but don't you see how this one, uh, you know, it's not just any bear video. It's also a pig video. Which means so if you guys like pigs, this is the perfect one. It affects one. your great love, your favorite animal, Isaiah's favorite animal. So Are you guys, really pigs? that's not my favorite animal, but we did have pigs at <laughs> my house. Exactly. So, by association, by you, association, you're my on favorite that. animal. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's the only animal. Well, I guess you raised dogs as well, but you, you know, you, you raised mean you pigs. Had a dog? Yeah, okay. I have a dog. I used to have some pigs at the house, so I am acquainted with pigs. What is your favorite animal, though? I don't know if I have one. I mean, I have Jim. Do I need a better animal than that? You can answer dog. It must be pig by default then. I mean, it could be pig by default. I guess I'd have it's to think about it. It's the animal you have the most experience that with. That is true. That is true. true. Exactly. But we, we all know that pigs can be very mean. Like, they're very, very... I don't know if everybody knows that, They though. can be very dangerous and very uh, agitated when uh-huh. provoked. They can, they certainly can. Something Isaiah knows firsthand. <laughs> and here... Because they're his favorite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was bitten by a pig one time. Exactly. See? <gasps> Did it eat you or try to eat you? I don't know what it was doing, but it hurt hurt really bad. I had a huge <laughs> bruise like the size of like your palm on the back of my uh, hamstring. Well, Aww. were you threatening the pig? No, I wasn't threatening him. I went in this so pan never... like I did every single day and then when I went to get out of it I was probably in fourth grade at the time traumatizing for nine-year-old Isaiah so... and I was climbing out and he did not want me to leave yet, I guess. Oh, oh wow. You. And he grabbed me by, by the back of the hamstring <laughs> and... Trying to pull you back in. Ironically back enough, in. the hamstring, huh? Yep, exactly. Some payback, some payback. So you're saying you never threatened a pig? I've never threat at well i don't know See? exactly i never i didn't not threaten your, him at that time now. but everybody's threatening their own animal Maybe. with i threaten jim every day i say you know what if you keep this up i'm gonna be putting you in your crates or whatever all the threats you make to your dog i did to those pigs as well maybe uh not oh, i'm sure you said all. you want to be bacon mm-hmm. exactly even at, in fourth grade you're yeah probably- Okay, so the video shows that uh, a bear, we, there's not a lot of context for it, but we have a black bear. It climbs into a, a pig, pig pen. pen. There's one big, I mean, that's a size. In terms of pigs, how big is that pig? Those are large pigs. Those I are, would say they're not big pigs, but they're just like sizable, like full-grown pigs. Is that all muscle? Uh, no. <laughs> remember, remember there the is ham? muscle there. Uh, <laughs> there's that's muscle all, there. It's lean. It's delicious. a lean meat. It's a lean meat. So the uh, the the bear climbs in. There's one pig visible. The the pig gives it, uh, you know, gets a little aggressive with this black bear. And then out comes pig number two and really gives. Uh, it looks like he's barking at it, even though he's not. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, yeah, I don't know. Is there, There's no sound to the he's video, right? He's probably snorting. Right? Yeah, but uh, the, the, the two pigs together in succession give the bear the what for until the bear has no option but to escape out of the pen, climb out of there in panic. 
And I just thought that was, uh, you know, I just, I saw that. I saw pigs. I saw bears. I thought I have to share this with you guys. But Aww. evidently Nikki's already seen it. already so. seen it because, you know, I, I'd be like, come on, bear. I'll get you something. Do you better get not, some food? Don't eat me, but like, come on over. You better not tell me Isaiah sent this to you. Uh, no. but That would be awesome. We give a side group message that this wasn't in there. Such a divide in the show. I'm sorry. I don't we know if we I didn't add that. you to that group. Yeah. yeah you'll you'll be in there message. soon. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got to share it with you guys. Well, then. okay. I asked, uh, you know, Isaiah Hudson, what's your favorite animal? So that way I know to look for any viral videos Ooh. on what I should be sending each other. Mm, I'll have to get back. Moose? Moose? Okay. Yeah, I'll take a moose. Maybe a caribou. They're a little, I don't know. Moose are pretty Im- impressive. So, and it's very Canadian. If animal. you find yourself in a viral video with a moose, uh-huh. you, you're, something's going it's on. It's going to be on the show, maybe. It's going to be bad. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Can we say a uh, quick thank you? To the people who donate to Radio U. Absolutely. I think that's warranted. Uh, if you didn't realize, Radio U, when other stations say commercial free, they mean for like an hour. Uh, Not this even is that. your <laughs> uninterrupted rock block or whatever. But on Radio U, it's always uninterrupted, it's always commercial free. And uh, the right way we do that is through donations uh, from listeners, people like you that uh, support Radio U. So if you're one of them, Thank you, of course. And uh, if you're not, and this is all news to you, you could always check out RadioU.com slash donate to find out more. And maybe even you want to become one of the people who donate to Radio U. So thank you for those who keep us going this summer. Yes. And those who consider and learn more about helping um, to keep us going forward this summer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we truly appreciate it. Uh, so this is... Huge news. Uh, You know, Ben Affleck. Yes. And Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, this is all you're going to hear this week, guys. They, uh, (laughs) this is it. They got married. They did. It's official. Uh, It looks like Saturday night in Las Vegas. Uh, Benjamin Giza Affleck. I didn't know that was his middle name. Uh, And Jennifer Lynn Lopez. Hey. Tied the knot. That's my middle name. It is? It is, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for uh, filling us in on that. There you go. You've learned something new. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've learned three middle names <laughs> The people I didn't, I didn't, didn't even realize. I'll let you decide. Uh... Actually, you know what? That's my mom's middle name. Hey! Oh! It's my mom's middle name, no! Same. Wow, Lynn is a popular <laughs> middle name, apparently. <laughs> I think I just that's really funny. Didn't uh, didn't realize that. Well, uh, back to the matter at hand. All right. And that is that they, Benjamin, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez got married over the weekend. And they actually did. So, yeah, they are okay. officially, uh, they are. Got the license to wed. Not like uh, Vegas, but it's not like not all signed or like this isn't a, a movie thing. Oh, no, this is real. Press thing. This is real. Just listen to uh, what Jennifer Lopez. Uh, well, I guess she would. What? Jennifer Affleck. Yeah, she Nay changed it. Lopez said uh, in her newsletter on the J-Lo, which obviously she's going to have to update that title. It can't be called that anymore. Uh, what do we, is it? J-Fleck? Or JF. Uh, let's see on. what she comes up with. Yeah, I guess that's a, it can be up to her. She can give herself a nickname, right? I mean, it is up to her. It's not like she should check in with us first. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get to decide no, what Jennifer don't. Lopez Affleck's new last we name don't, is. And we actually, it doesn't really bother us, whatever she picks. Uh, so she says that uh, this was, this is a quote. Last night we flew to Vegas, stood in line for a license with four other couples all making the same journey to the wedding capital of the world. Uh, they barely made it to the little white wedding chapel by midnight. And then she says, listen to this, this is inspirational, Nikki. Uh, stick around long enough and maybe you'll find the best moment of your life in a drive through in Las Vegas at 1230 in the morning in the Tunnel of Love drive through with your kids and the one you'll spend forever with. Well, you know, I... I used to go to Vegas a little bit more frequently, uh-huh. and I, that's kind of like the in and out drive. The best so. moment of your life. It doesn't have to be a wedding hey, chapel. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes uh, when love strikes, you just can't wait any longer. I guess you. And can't. you know what? Uh, I mean, it's not they're old, but uh, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lynn Lopez Affleck. 
They're uh, they're getting on in years, so Good why wait? Them. Why wait? It's just it was sad. I I felt really bad because like this is a joyous moment for them, but uh-huh. we deal so much in news during the week. Yeah, that when I saw it break through, I was like, I really did feel like, oh man, that is all we're gonna see all week <laughs> on the entertainment well, side of news. <laughs> yeah, but it, it should warm your heart. At least this is good news. It does. Would you look- like to hear more about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? No. Then but let's it- let this have as much oxygen as it needs. It a tale feels- of love. It fills in. Unfortunately, the holes from that stuff. Uh-huh. And so then you just overhear about their their wedding. But, but good th- for them. I think it, it should warm your heart. If Hey, if Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, things didn't go great for them at first, right? They were together. They sure. broke up. They saw their people. They're back together. They're, now they're married. If they can make it work, I think there's hope for all of us. Anyone can. Anyone can make it work. Through if- a drive through wedding chat. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hudson, Nikki, The Riot, on Radio U. Text in on this one. This is a good question Isaiah came up with. Uh, Really pulling your weight around here lately. (laughs) Isaiah, uh, what was the question? What are you good at but hate doing? Oh. Mm. You mean like people hate you that you do it so well or you just hate doing Ah, it? You just hate doing it. You just hate doing it. You got one, Nikki? Uh, Well, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, like with in your family circle, Uh like are you guys the one if something tech-wise breaks, they come to you to fix it? Mm, Uh, That's a good question. Not me. Oh, no, not Not me. (laughs) No, I mean, I'm fine with that, but uh, I don't, I'm not so good. That they that I get asked, so sure. I don't hate it. Well, hate okay, it. then welcome to our world. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's hard sometimes when you're the one they assume knows everything for it, uh-huh. and then when you if you can do it, sure, but it's just hard being the one. You're you're the one they turn to, also, Isaiah. Yeah, for like if someone's having an issue with their phone, like my yeah. mom or dad, uh-huh. it's either probably me or my younger brother Jaden who would also help. Or like a login. Yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> login. Do you know how much pressure it is to be the one to know everybody's login? <laughs> Let alone just your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that. It's hard to keep track of all that. Uh, you got one, Isaiah? I don't, don't know. Don't say everything. I was not going to say everything. <laughs> I did think about, though, that is a possible answer. Um, I don't know. I feel like for me, like with my my friends, like nobody really wants to like take charge or like or like make plans. And so usually that falls upon me, which I'm okay with. But I hate the one who's, like, in charge of, like, what we're going to do on, like, a Saturday or a Friday or, like, an event. Because then, like, when it comes down to it, if things don't go, like, perfectly as planned, mm. it falls back on you, even though you're just as much of a part of it as everybody else is. <laughs> and so, but nobody wants to take charge. So uh-huh. then somebody has to. That's a lot of pressure. It usually ends up being me. And then when things don't go as planned, they're like, I say, what happened? Like, yeah. what? what's going on? You're well, the you one. probably have a pretty good hit rate, though, don't you think? I mean, yeah. Like, it's like a 99 percenter, but. <laughs> Every now and then, we don't have fun. So, well, Kayla just texted in and said, I'm good at piano, but hate playing it. Uh, too much pressure. Uh, fortunately, that's uh, an easy one to avoid. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Caleb, I'm sorry. That seemed like actual talent. Uh-huh. We're talking like lower than that. Right. Yeah. Oh, Not I'm sorry you're burdened talent. with the ability to play the piano. It must be so difficult for you. But I bet, like for this, he mentioned like playing weddings. Uh-huh. I'm sure you're the oh, go-to yeah. person. Oh, uh, yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, you you obviously can do this for free. Yeah, I've got a good one. Uh, this show. Ah, there it <laughs> is. That was so a good, good one, at it. So good at it, but, you know, <laughs> dealing with you people and waking up early every morning, I, I hate doing it, Aww, but, you, you know, still do it's, it what, it's what's demanded of me. Mm. This is my burden to carry. <laughs> What a burden. Yeah. Uh, I, what else am I good at that I hate doing? I see you're not taking that one back. <laughs> I know. Huh. Okay. That's the question. Well, is there anything else? Um, you have any other talents or just, just this? Uh, Are you saying this isn't enough? This isn't it's enough. It's not enough. I don't know. It what is I, enough. What, see, I kind of hate doing the dishes. I don't know. Am I really good at it? <laughs> That's, That's an incredible talent. skill. Well, okay. He, let he me gets him clean and everything, Nikki. They're <laughs> spotless. This, let me tell you, uh, when I worked at uh, when I worked in the food service industry for a long time, it took me a long time to work my way up. From I started as a dishwasher, and they, I actually could keep up with the dishes. Really? He was versus so good. other people that I was on dish duty for a long time. But then they finally realized at some point. Well, he's good at this. Maybe he might be good at other challenges we throw his way. And sure enough, 
that was uh, that was me. They yeah. were like Hudson, the longest standing bus boy of all time. And they told him he was incredible at it. It's just because nobody else wanted well, to do it. Not a lot so of uh, not a lot of dishwashers work their way out of the back and up to the front. Usually, there's a reason they're in the back. But for me, you know, I uh, tidied things up a little bit, got my hair in order and whatever, and uh, all of us put on a different shirt. All of a sudden. They uh, <laughs> took my talents out of the back and into the front. I love it if you become like the dishwasher all the way to your next position, not even scaling up, but instead they're like, and now I'm the manager of the whole restaurant. <laughs> it was so good. And now I own it. I started as the bus boy, the longest standing bus boy. Nobody Franchise believed owner. in me. Nobody believed <laughs> well, in me. Well, okay, we gave you a lot of options there, guys, um, including piano player or dishwasher. <laughs> so if there's something that you're good at but you hate doing, uh, we'll need a few more options. We can't come up with anything else. 8772 Radio U if you want to text in. The Riot Radio U. Question of the moment. What are you good at but you hate doing? Mm. Uh, no matter how good you get, uh, people keep asking, and that's why you hate it probably. Well, I have an update on Caleb. He's the one who knows how to play piano really well. Uh-huh. He said uh, he's been asked to play three weddings so far for his friends. Oh, <laughs> now he here's nervous. the question, uh, Caleb. Do you get paid for those weddings? You better not be doing it for free. I, well, I don't care how your, good a friend. No, I don't care how good a friend. If it's your friend, that can sometimes be the gift that you get. That's oh, true. Yeah. There you go. Then you don't have to do anything but your time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bailey says, this is so sweet. So Bailey says, when my grandpa was alive, he never knew how to clear notifications off his tablet. So every time he went over, uh, had me clear the notifications, no matter how many times I showed him to do it himself. He never <laughs> could. Oh, I think that's so sweet. Maybe, Bailey, your grandfather just liked, you know, that was your thing. Right. That was a nice way of, uh, of connecting. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, that's very sweet. And then Jaden texted in and said, Isaiah, did I hear that your brother's name is Jaden <laughs> It is <well>? Jaden. <laughs> It's a good, strong name. <laughs> Such a great name before. Such a great name. Uh, but Jaden said, I'm the tech guy for my family and at work, and I love it, but what I don't like is the pressure that you have after you've done uh, to fix everything, uh-huh. that it actually stays fixed. So uh-huh. that's yeah. the part that annoys. That's true. If you've uh, fixed something and then uh, it breaks again or something, and then they bl- and then the person blames you, uh, and that's not just with tech stuff. That's just with anything ever. Uh, that you don't that pressure afterwards of oh so you fixed it so it must be your fault that it broke again sure not not a big fan of that or not that it broke but maybe you just have to do it again yeah. like if you forget if you're the type of person that's forgetting your login stuff mm-hmm. you're gonna keep forgetting your login stuff yeah. oh yeah uh-huh. it's not gonna uh-huh. change so. I like. I liked uh, Dee's text in. She said that uh, her talent that she always gets asked to uh, to do over and over again. Make salads. Oh, for parties yeah, and stuff? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I never thought that making a salad, there was an art form to it. Well, I but maybe that's her, just because I play it too safe and I'm not talented. I said, next time you got to send us a picture of uh, one of these famous ones. I think, uh, I guess that that one, I feel like you could get out of it, though. And actually, the, the uh, piano at the wedding thing, too. Just uh, mess it up a little bit. Oh, but then you you're know? ruining the... But then you're ruining a wedding. Uh, how much do you want to stop playing the piano? Oh my how much do you hate it? <laughs> Hudson's like, well, do you want to do it or not? I yeah, mean, especially because he's just worried, ruined your friend's this wedding. Is Caleb worrying about messing up anyways, right? So just it mess up on purpose. But then can't we? They're walking down the aisle. Hudson's like, just screw it up. <laughs> You'll never have to do it again if you mess this part up. Well, why don't you think? Can't we learn to? I think the problem is none of us speak up when we don't want to do something uh-huh. in the very beginning, and then you find yourself. The person who has to do right. this, you know, for now everybody else in your family. What if, uh, what if Caleb's friends that are getting married are listening to this? And they're, and like, they're like, aww. Yeah, now what are we going to do? <laughs> we have to find a new piano player. Or it's going to strain our friendship. No, you can just have him come and then put like um, a big bowl on the piano so that you can put some tip money in it or something. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. go. That'll yeah, pay see off. how much you can make. That'll pay off. Maybe we should have used a fake name for Caleb. <laughs> I mean, it's not Caleb. (laughs) Yeah, obviously. Well, it's uh, just Jaden. We'll just say Jaden. It's just Jaden. Everybody (laughs) is Jaden. This is Radio U's worst of the riot. Well, we're getting to the point where uh, you might want to start thinking about buying a Mega Millions ticket. Did you see that the jackpot is uh, getting up there? That worries me. It worries you? Well, I mean, guys, the chances of us winning are uh, pretty slim. I can tell you exactly how much the <laughs> chances of you winning are. It's 302,575,350 to 1. 
Yeah, so at that point, um, you know, good luck. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you're going to try it. Well, you're going to need some and luck if you're going to win. the more people that try, you know, uh-huh. it's just... The more you'd have to split it. The more you'd have to yeah. split all those chances. Uh, but the Mega Millions jackpot, it is uh, now up for tomorrow night is when the next drawing will be. Uh, it is going to be at least $530 million dollars. Uh, or about $304.7 million in cash. Hey, that's Okay, so that's what they take out? Because if you take cash, you lose you get part of it. way less than if you uh, take the annuity, right? Sure. Which is probably the smarter thing to do, right? Of course. Well, I mean, uh, that's just spreading it out over time. You don't need $304 million all at once. Oh, no, I would take it. I would take that much. You would? Because just you all at once? Can, you cannot in your lifetime go through probably $530 mm. million. Yeah, I don't know what the... Uh, like how many, if you take the annuity version, mm-hmm. how many years do they pay that out over? Just the rest of your life? Or is it like 10 years? Or do you get to decide? Believe it or not, I never won. You've so never I've, won? I've never played. Yeah, I've never um, played the Mega Millions either. I'd also have to find out like tax-wise what would be the easiest and like yeah. the, the less... You know, right. Hurtful. You wouldn't want the <laughs> you don't want the government to get too much of your money that you won and from the government in a way. Honestly, I'd probably leave at that point because, dude, everybody would bug you for a few million here, uh-huh. a few million there. So you'd have to disappear. You uh, if Nikki ever leaves the show, you know why? Uh, I, it's because I won, she the won the Mega Millions. Uh, I like to think, though, I am so kind that I would gift a few people some stuff on my way uh-huh. out. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll be waiting. Then. I'll, I'll take have the my, next fundraiser. I'll, I'll have my hand out. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the the drawing is tomorrow night. Uh, do they do a TV the, show on it, or like, do you just get a text if you win, or do you have uh, to find out? Or they announce the numbers like I don't know. I remember uh, when I used to watch like TV, you know, back in the day before you could just stream whatever. You know, like if you would watch the local TV station at I don't know if it's five o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever, they'd at least have like a little split screen thing with, with whatever was on the TV and you'd see a guy pick the numbers out or whatever and there'd be some person with I don't know if they do that anymore, how they do it. I'm sure it's streamed online at least, because you have to have like the video of it has to be on record, right? To make sure I'm that sure. it's actually above board. If you but, have a ticket, do you get texted? <laughs> oh no. There's usually uh there's usually I mean, it doesn't happen always, but you know, like you see the stories of the people that have no idea that they've won. No, I meant, do do you all just get texted the winning numbers and then it's up to you? I wonder if you can sign up for that. Because then I have to, right? I do know it's up to you to figure out if you have it and then you have to turn it in. Yeah. So the more uh, ways they can make it easier for you to, because it is, it is true though. It's always funny when somebody will buy a ticket and then they are the winner and it goes unclaimed for who knows how long because how do they not know? They're also getting ready. To yeah, I guess you got to get your affairs in order. What? No. Decide what you're doing next. Hudson, you got to get your ducks in order. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get everything in order yeah. before you're the one that you wins. You have to be able to be ready to skip down, I guess. If you're at least if you're Nikki, I need a few months to pack, uh-huh. so I wouldn't turn it in until I was all ready. But they say that it is the uh, the eighth biggest jackpot ever in Mega Millions, which seems. I mean, obviously, it is a lot of money, but when I saw that the biggest one ever is basically three times this. It was like $1.5 billion. Wow. It makes this one feel a little less significant. And also, though, but think about it, this, Nikki. Uh, if you, a Mega Millions ticket is $2. Mm-hmm. So if it gets a little bit higher, what did we say? The, the uh, odds are basically $302 million to one. So if the, uh, if the jackpot gets a little bit bigger, you could just buy enough tickets uh, to... Uh, ensure a win mm. and then you'd still guarantee a profit yeah not gonna win you have to have <laughs> you'd have to have about 600 million dollars to invest in that so <laughs> i mean way. still it feels like something if elon musk wanted to get a lot richer he could do it but for all the rest of us we got to do it two dollars at a time mm. and uh the odds are not in our favor so 530 million dollar jackpot you won't hear a show like this anywhere else And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Well, a fairly impressive feat was accomplished over the weekend. Uh, It actually, I mean, it took uh, just about an entire week for it to happen. But we have a guy who has become uh, the fourth person ever to push a peanut all the way up to the summit 
of uh, Pike's Peak with his nose. Really? He started at the bottom and now, well, he was at the peak. <laughs> he was there. And so now. And where was he? He was at the top of Pike's Peak with a peanut. So at first when I saw it, I saw like Pike's Place instead of Pike's Peak. Uh-huh. Because, like, you know, the market, I was like, why is he doing that at Pike's Place? <laughs> Like, what's he doing? Okay, it makes more sense up a mountain. Pike's Peak. All yeah, right. that is right. Where uh, he made it. Uh, and he's in... wearing a nose, too. A um... Yeah, I don't know what. Uh, it says that the first guy to do it uh, was way back in 1929 and did it with a, a spoon attached to his nose, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, that was the guy. Okay, so three people have done it before. The first guy ever was 1929. Uh, his name was Bill Williams. He did it to win a bet. Oh, he won five hundred bucks. I feel like alcohol was involved. I don't. <laughs> you know, after uh, like about a week going up Pike's Pike's Peak and he's with still pushing doing a it? peanut, you, you, I think you sober up at some point. Uh, they say that it was for five hundred bucks back then. That's but a that's, lot of money back then. That's uh, that'd be about eight thousand dollars today. Would you push a peanut all the way up? To the peak, Pike's Peak, for uh, for eight thousand bucks. No, it seems like that's too long, and like this is more physical than you think it is. It is. So because it's so hot, the guy who currently pushed this sounds so dumb uh-huh. pushed the peanut up to Pike's Peak uh-huh. with his nose. Uh, he had to do most of the pushing after dark, and uh, <laughs> when it was in the daylight, right. he would have to stop every ten minutes uh-huh. or five minutes or so and take pictures, talk to people, take a break, and that's what made this actually take a lot longer. Longer than it was, it would have if it was right. not so hot out. Yeah, it makes sense to do it uh, when it's not hot, but also it is, it's funny that uh, I guess if people see you pushing a peanut with your nose, I would just walk past you and not, you're not supposed to engage. Oh, come on, it's an Instagrammable no, moment. You don't bring that up. You don't, because what if that's all sorts of its own crazy right there? No, he's not crazy. He was doing it because it's the 150th anniversary of the town of Manitou Springs, which yeah. sits at the base of Pikes Peak. It's an, imp- you know, he was doing it for the city. He said he lost some weight during his peanut pushing time. Uh-huh. Uh, his muscles are fine. Uh, he ate peanuts, Pop Tarts, bananas, and crackers to fuel him. He was a little dehydrated. And uh, it took him two dozen peanuts to push up because sometimes they would fall. <laughs> yeah, get stuck and in the rock the cracks. And so he couldn't use them again. So he had to carry extra peanuts. That is, uh, I, I, it is impressive that uh, going up a whole mountain uh, for a, basically a week, you're climbing, uh, and he wasn't sore afterwards. No, seven days. Uh, I also appreciate, I don't know if you saw, but he would have to, he, he was supposed to have somebody accompany him mm-hmm. and carry his stuff up, you know, keep his supplies, uh, but that person didn't work out, so he had to push the peanut I'm up. not surprised. <laughs> What? <laughs> Nobody wanted to be seen with him? He Nobody had a week to devote to this task? Hey, it's hard to find workers it is. for anything. Uh-huh. And uh, so he had to, he would push the peanut up a certain amount uh, and then go back down and get his supplies, like oh, just and then, walking, and oh, then wow. go back up and then continue pushing. So he really, this Did took him twice. about a week to do. Yeah, and he climbed twice. Good for him. Yeah, wow. Well, uh, shout out to you, Bob Salem. Uh, it's a big accomplishment. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if Nikki's not impressed I or am. ashamed, embarrassed to be seen with you. I'm impressed that there was three other people who had this previous record. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm impressed about. And the one got 500 bucks for it. That's right. And these guys are doing it for free. <laughs> and you... Uh, Oh, your family must be proud. (laughs) That's what you spent your whole week on. Thanks for watching the worst of the riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more More riot. riot.